Assalamu alaikum. Get to know your Lord. First part of the Right Belief series by Sheikh Karim Abu Zaid. This dynamic literary work of art's main goal is to revive an understanding the names and attributes of Allah. In understanding the name and attributes of Allah will elevate our faith strengthening us and keep us steadfast. This wonderful book is now available in an audiobook format and can be found free of charge on YouTube channel Karim Abu Zaid. Get to know your Lord. You have nothing to lose. It's a place where it will thrive. You will make it through. You will make it through. The fifth is awakening you. With Quran and Sunnah on his side, here's a place where it will thrive. You will make it through. With Quran and Sunnah on his side, here's a place where it will thrive. You will make it through. Rasulullah, I want to welcome everybody uh, to our um, Aqidah class. And we are studying uh, from the books written by Sheikh Karim Abu Zaid. And this is the, the last of the trilogy, uh, which is diluting El Wella Welbera Volume 2. And for those of you who do not yet have this book and the whole series for that matter, because when we are done uh, with this, uh, which is the last of the book, we'll be starting over again with the first one, which is get to know your Lord. Because a lot of you were not here when I began this trilogy. A lot of you were not here when I started off uh, three years ago with the because it takes a year to go through each book. Because these books are so intense, uh, it takes a whole year to go through each one of the trilogy. And many of you were not here when I first began this journey uh, three years ago with the first book, Get to Know Your Lord. So make sure that uh, you don't just buy this book, but get all three of them. And they all cost the same money, $19.99. And also make sure you get the new book, uh, the new, the book of the new uh, advertisement that I just put out today on the Mukasit Tafsir, the Mukasit Tafsir, which is his uh, another. <clears throat> excuse me, my allergies. Ooh, it's another um, uh, uh, series dealing with the understanding the Quran uh, that uh, Sheikh Kareem Abouze has put out. I'll begin teaching that in a couple of weeks. So you not only want to get this book, but you want to get the whole series of the Right Belief series. Get the whole, uh, the whole series, which I think is like $60 or something. I can't remember if you buy it, all three. And then you want to also get book one of the Mukasit Tafsir. The Mukhasidic Tafsir, because I'll be teaching that uh, in a couple of, of uh, weeks. Yes. Yeah, the sister is, wait, yes. She, oh, really? She said she has the book and she doesn't understand it. That's why you need a teacher. MashaAllah. I'm so happy that you shared that because a lot of Muslims don't understand. Uh, there is a big misconception that we have. We think that since we're Muslim, all we have to do is buy a book that has Islam in it, get married, and then half the knowledge of Islam falls into your heart. <laughs> I think that is the most ridiculous interpretation of a had misinterpretation, misinterpretation of a hadith I've ever heard. They think that if you get married, 50% of the knowledge of Islam is going to fall into your brain and your heart. Oh, no. Wow, how contorted we become as a nation. 
No, you can't teach yourself the religion like the prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and he didn't teach himself. He learned the religion from the angel Jibreel Alayhi Islam, and uh, that's the same with you and I. We have to learn from the people of knowledge. I don't teach myself. I didn't teach myself. I've had teachers, scholars to teach me. You have to have people of knowledge to teach you. You cannot uh, just buy a book, read it. Because if you buy any of these books, just like this book too, uh, diluting, while it well better, you guys know it's very hard to understand it. You know, not because you can't read. All of us know how to read. Okay. But, you know, if you don't understand uh, your the basics of your religion, you're not going to know what he's talking about. You're not going to know what he's talking about. It's just common sense. So uh, the same with that, the Mukhasid, uh, the Mukhasidic uh, Tafsir is the same way. That whole series, uh, you have to understand, you have to know the Hadiths, to be honest. The Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, already told us, you will never understand the Quran until you learn the Hadiths, because the Hadiths are the explanation, the meaning of the Quran. So unless you know those hadiths, you're not going to understand nothing. I mean, he's breaking it down. He'll take uh, uh, surahs of the Quran, certain specific surahs, like Dr. Asim does, and he'll try to break down the meaning of them to you, the same way that Dr. Jermali, uh, uh did with his uh, surah Nisa. But just like when you guys are here for surah Nisa for Dr. Jermali's class, he had to explain it in detail. To get you to understand, that's the same way with anything in this religion. So, yeah, that's why it's confusing. So don't feel bad. That's why you have me here, inshallah, and I'll teach you. I'll walk you through that book just like I did with these. Now you guys understand the fitra. Now you guys understand, you know, uh, what, it, what word should I use? Revert or convert? Now you all know the correct word is convert not revert because you understand what the fitra is and, and, and what it represents and all of that. So yeah, but yeah, the book is beautiful, isn't it though? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, yes, go ahead. She's and all she said, he also has two other books. Yes. That's part of that series. Yes. If you want to buy them, get them too, because I'm going to inshallah go over, teach those books as well. Yeah, so yeah, it wouldn't be a waste of your money. Plus, the knowledge is so great. Oh my gosh. I've been wanting to teach this series of his on the Mukasit uh top seer for a long time. Yeah. Yes, exactly. It's just like what Dr. Jamal, like the Dr. Jamali is doing, except now you have a book. You know, now you have a book that you can hold and we can teach you from a book where you can go back and review. Yeah, that's the new addition I've done to this website because we've been around since 1986. You know, I never used books with you guys before. I use my PowerPoint. Okay. But now because I didn't know any books that were written in English well enough to use because the books in English are not that many that really break down the meaning of this religion, especially well, I well better and uh, what la means and all of that. But when I saw Sheikh Kareem Abu Zay's series, I said, Alhamdulillah, finally, finally, somebody put into English the total meaning of la Muhammad Dor Rasulullah, I can teach that. And the same with his Mukhasit Tafsir. I can do that. I can use that book as a series. Yeah, so get all three of them if you want. Yes, but I'm going to do the, start, of course, begin with the first one. And that'll be inshallah in a couple of weeks. Yeah, it's going to replace my series on um, Enjoining Good and Forbidding. When I'm, whenever I'm done with the uh, Enjoining Good, Forbidding Evil series, Inshallah, that will replace it. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Okay, and so today, what I've done in this book, because as you can see in this chapter of diluting, El Well, El Well Better, uh, Sheikh Kareem focuses on how to establish 
an Islamic school. If how, if you're living in a non-Islamic society, how to go about developing and establishing an Islamic school for your community of Muslims. And then he goes also how to under, how to establish an online institution as well. So what I've done in this chapter, I skipped around some of the things that don't apply to us because I'm not here to try to do that to teach you guys how to establish a school. But it's good for you to know that if you are part of an Islamic community and your community doesn't have an Islamic school, how to go about setting it up. But what I'm gonna do is go over. I like how he went over the type of curricula, the type of classes, the type of subject matter that should be taught and should be discussed. And that's what I'm going to go over today with you guys. You know, uh, a lot of you guys will ask me, uh, since we're living in the digital era, you know, everything is on the internet. Everybody has a website. Everybody calls themselves teaching Islam. Well, how do you know if one is good? You know, if, you know, there are certain things you need to look at, certain subject matter that that uh, so-called online school should have. My website is an online Islamic university. So we have all this stuff. Okay. But a lot of other people claim to be an online learning. Come join my website, sign up. They always charge money. Y'all know. Pay me a hundred dollars a month. They beg you. B pay me a hundred dollars a week. A hundred dollars a week, and I'll teach you the Quran. That's all about the Quran. It's all about how to sing the Quran, okay? Without understanding what you sing it, okay? So, or they'll say, just join. I have my own website to help you sisters become nice Muslimas. You know, sign up a hundred dollars a week, two hundred dollars a week, and I'll help you to be able to understand the human psyche. You'll walk away knowing, you know, how what how the world views us as women. Is that what we're supposed to be teaching? So that's what I'm going to focus on today. So let me put the um, PowerPoint up on the screen. <laughs> yeah, one of the sisters, let me tell you all something too. This is so real. One of the sisters here off of YouTube sent me a link. She said, Layla, I want you to check this out. Look at this link. A Muslim woman, these three Muslim women call themselves teaching Islam, doing, you know, trying to be like Layla. Oh my God, it's hilarious. And they're charging like, what was it, sister, $250 uh, every two weeks? I guess that's paying their bills and I don't know. But they got a lot of women that signed up for them and their classes and stuff. And these are new women, new shahadas who really think that they're getting ready to learn the religion. You know, $250 every two weeks. And uh, you look at what these women are teaching. It's hilarious. How to wrap a hijab. <laughs> hijab tutorials. Uh, that's that's one of their what they're what they're teaching. These women are paying two hundred and fifty dollars every two weeks to learn different techniques and uh, uh, ways of how to wrap a hijab. <laughs> you know? Okay. Um, um, how to handle rejection? Oh yeah, that's one of their classes. How to handle rejection from a loved one. That's a class. How to handle rejection from a loved one, be it a spouse, be it your parents, be it your children. And what's another one that they're, or they, their classes, sister, just one more. <laughs> yes. How to dress. How to dress, how to dress for a job interview. How to, what is she, yeah, she, how to land a job dressed as a Muslim woman. That is actually a class that they're teaching. How to land a job 
applying as a, a, a dressed as a Muslim woman. And these sisters are paying them $250 every two weeks. What's that? $500 a month? If you they got if they had 20 people, and they got more than 20 people, but if they just had 20 people signing up to take those broke down classes, them sisters got it made. And they got a lot of women who are on, who are a part of their so-called Islamic school. My classes are free. <laughs> I don't even have a third. All I got is 25 followers. <laughs> Sign of the time. So, yeah, exactly. So we need to learn, you know, learning about Islam, learn, knowing how to wrap a hijab. Is that a, a part of an Islamic curricula, curriculum? Okay. Learning how to land a job dressed as a, a Muslim woman. Okay. How to handle rejection from a loved one. Can y'all believe that? How to handle rejection from a loved one. And people paying these sisters money, paying them. All right. So let's talk about that. Let me put the PowerPoint up on the screen for to can see the PowerPoint. Okay, hold on. Let me move this over so I can see it. Yeah, and yeah, let me do go here. Okay, so today we're gonna cover pages 331. I think I stopped at 334, but I began at 331. I did a little skipping around, okay? We're going to speak about how to balance the ethics of well and well better in digital educational learning. You know, you looking to stay at home and learn your religion, all these websites, on the internet claiming to be teaching Islam, like the one I just shared with you guys, these sisters teaching Islam, what their class, their courses consist of, how to, how to learn how to wrap a hijab tutorial, okay? How to handle rejection from a loved one, how to dress and land a job. What does that have to do with well or well better? What does that have to do with bringing you closer to a law? What does that have to do with helping your fitra to grow? But a lot of these people, and they charge money. The sad thing is these, all these people charge money. They're not free. My website is free. But they're not. So let's take a look at this. And uh, the first thing that Sheikh Kareem Abouze says here, which is what I was just saying, as educators embark upon this journey of integrating, uh, using the internet to teach Islam, we have to remember that when it comes to teaching Islam, everything begins with and ends with La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Dor Rasulullah. That's aqeedah, aqeedah, aqeedah. It has to be classes relating to aqeedah, your worship of Allah and your allegiance. And there are certain guidelines that a real Islamic, bona fide Islamic school would ha have to, ha has to have, okay? And it, it falls upon you as the seeker of knowledge, you as the seeker of knowledge to verify what it is that you think you're getting ready to learn. Make sure that the content is authentic. Make sure that whatever their classes are, are classes to bring you close to Allah, okay? Remember, Allah tells us in the Quran, in the interpretation of the meaning, oh, you who believe, if there comes to you a disobedient person with information, investigate, or you may end up harming someone out of ignorance, and then you'll feel bad about it. There's a lot of scammers out there. They want to take your money. You know, $500 a month, that's a lot of money, okay? 
And if you got just 20 people, you do the math. These sisters got hundreds of women. They making a fortune off of the ignorance of other people thinking that got these new shahadas thinking that they're teaching them what they need to know in order to be a Muslim and to make it, make it through the trials of life. So you want to make sure that whatever the classes are, number one, the content aligns with Islamic teachings and principles not worldly teachings, worldly principles, the psychology of the human nature. That stuff ain't got nothing to do with nothing. That's man's opinion because Allah already told us the nature of the human being. Allah has already told us that we are criminal and attracted to what's bad and dirty by nature. That's our nature. Allah has already told us that, you know, the fitra within us is constantly trying to find its way back home. So what do you need some man's view or some woman's view of what your purpose is? So you want to make sure that the content of these so-called Islamic classes align with what it should align with, which is well, well, better, Allah. Akira, Akira, Akira. And then look at what materials they're using. The books, the books and, and the programs and the philosophy that they're using, it must be in accordance with the understanding of the companions, guys, because there's a lot of innovations out there. So you want to make sure that, first of all, the content. It's content that'll bring me closer to my Lord. And secondly, whatever material they're using is based on the understanding of the prophet and those companions. Okay. And this is something that the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to reiterate over and over again to the companions. If people claim to be using hadiths, you got to make sure that the hadiths they use are authentic. That's why I tell you, you're the, you don't know if they are because you're new. But any educated teacher would do like me, even though I memorized the entire sitta. When I teach all of my stuff is based on Bukhari and Muslim. I try to use Bukhari and Muslim with you guys because that way you can see it's if there is no question about any of those hadiths so if you're learning from people and they're using hadiths from those other books 60 percent of the hadiths in daoud are not authentic 65 percent of termini is not authentic 60 percent of ibn Majah is not authentic so how do you know why are they using that 85% of the knowledge of Islam can be found in Sahih Bukhari alone. Why are they not using Bukhari hadiths? Why are they not using Sahih Muslim, knowing that you guys are new converts to the religion and don't know any better? We have to remember, guys, that's important because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do not tell a lie against me. Because whoever tells a lie against me intentionally will enter the hellfire. So why would you do that? Put yourself in a position where you enter into the hellfire. Stick with what you know to be authentic. Bukhari and Muslim. If they're not using Bukhari and Muslim hadiths, I'm telling you, sisters, don't listen to them. Okay, so the content, the content must be authentic. The content must be content that's going to bring you close to Allah. Keep your fitra awakened. And also you need privacy. Privacy, especially for us Muslim women. 
You don't want to join some webinar or some online so-called classes where women and men are together and private messaging, private chatting, and all that garbage. Because all that has become now is a pickup joint. Okay? And also the people teaching you, you know, they should safeguard and, uh, and protect you as well from that. Why do y'all think I run my Zoom room and I run this website like this? I'm a, No, you ain't going to come up in here trying to pick up none of my young girls. You ain't going to come up in here floor showing any of these older sisters. You're going to get banned out. And we don't allow for spies either. Allah says in the Quran and the interpretation of meaning, don't spy on each other. A lot of people join like they try to come in my website, like that one brother that I keep banning. He wants to know why I ban him. You ain't here to learn. You're here to spy and act a fool and slander. I don't have time for you. So you want to protect the students or whoever your, your students are to make sure that they can come and learn from you in an Islamic environment and my an Islamic environment that's safe where they don't have to worry about some man trying to pick them up. Okay. The prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam respected the privacy of the people. And he used to instruct the companions to do the same. He had to teach the Arabs that you don't just walk in people's houses. Always ask permission. You don't peek in the people's windows to see why they ain't answering the door. So in a digital setting, the privacy and safety must be of great concern. Okay. And again, if the person calls themselves teaching Islam, everything we do, if we want our good deeds to be accepted, number one, Whatever it is we're doing, we have to do it for the sake of pleasing Allah and Allah alone, not Allah and anyone else. And number two, whatever we do, if you want the good deed to be accepted, it must be performed the way the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded us to perform it. And when it comes to teaching Islam, there are certain Islamic etiquettes that we have to abide by. You have to know when to hold and know when to fold, especially if you're a Muslim woman like me. Like I told you guys, Allah commands the Muslim woman that whenever she is pu public, she has to be rough and tough. That's the way I have to be. I have to put up this loud, strong, intimidating, Exterior, when I'm on this internet publicly. Now in my Zoom room, it's different. When the lights and cameras go off, I just got my sisters here with me in this Zoom room. We laugh, we talk. I don't, I'm not loud and rough and tough with them because they my sisters. But when I turn this camera on and he's, I don't know, 69%, no, 70, 70% 70 of the people listening to me right now and watching me right now are men. I can't be nice in front of no man like that. My inner sweetness is only for my husband. It ain't for no man to see or hear. So you have to know as a diet or a teacher when to hold and when to fold. And if people come trying to argue with you, you have to know how to deal with that too. Remember, Allah says in the Quran, in the interpretation of the meaning, invite to the way of your Lord with wisdom and good manners and argue with them in a way that is best. Okay, and, and people are different. The way that I would check a Muslim is not the way I would check a Christian. If a Christian were to come into my stream or come into my Zoom room, I would handle them in a different way than a, 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 a bad Muslim. Okay? So we invite 
in a way that is best. That means you have to know the situation, read the audience, know the, the who you're talking to and what you do, who you're dealing with. Okay. But always lower your wing with the believers. The prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would tell the companions, don't treat each other the way we have to treat these Quraysh. Be kind, empathetic, and compassionate with your brothers and sisters in Islam. Be harsh with the hypocrites, because we got hypocrites too. Okay? So you have to know how to speak and deal with people in the way that is best, depending on who you're dealing with. If you're dealing with a hypocrite, you're dealing with a stone calfer like Christian, or you're just dealing with a person that just doesn't know any better because they're new to Islam and just don't know. That's something that I struggle with with some of my other uh, people in my Zoom room. Not everybody is bad. Not every woman uh, is a bad, disgraceful woman. Some women just don't know. Okay. Also, you have to be up to date. You have to be up to date, up to date on technology. And also be a person that's constantly updating your knowledge and your understanding of this religion too, guys. That's important because no one knows it all. And, uh, and life is a constant challenge and a constant learning ground. Even for a, a person like me, I'm constantly learning. I learned from Sheikh Morsi. I learned from Dr. Asim. I learned from Jermali. Okay? We're always learning. Nobody knows it all. So, uh, um, uh, and then not only do we have to continuously upgrade our knowledge, but be firm in what you learn. And this is a problem I see with a lot of Muslims today. You know, they come and take classes to learn about the deen, but do they have certainty of faith? No. They can go to the mosque and, uh, uh, and get into an argument over something as simple as you got fingernail polish on. And that person, a, a person to come to them and say, oh, stuck for law. You can't come to the mosque. You got fingernail polish on. Your prayer is not accepted. Is that true? I taught you the truth. But do, do, did you really believe it? If you believed it, then why is it that you let those sisters break you down every time you come to the mosque with fingernail polish on? So certainty of faith. Certainty of faith is needed. Make sure that the teachers that are teaching you have certainty of faith, that not only is what they saying accurate, what they saying the truth, what they're saying uh, um, um, of authentic, but also do the teachers act upon it? Do they believe it? Will they hold firm to it, to what they're teaching? Remember the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to make dua a lot, sometimes over a uh, hundred times a day. And many of the companions would hear him make one specific supplication. He would say, O oh Allah, O oh turner of the hearts, keep my heart firm upon your religion. In other words, he was asking for certainty of faith Keep me firm upon your religion. My belief firm with can't no one, no one pull me away from the truth. No one cause me to question what I know to be true. So you want to make sure that what whoever is teaching you, that person not only is teaching you correctly, but also that they themselves are firm in what they say that they believe in. And also, does the peop, does the person promote critical thinking? In other words, ask you questions like I do. Quiz you. You're paying five hundred dollars a month to 
choose women to teach you how to wrap a hijab, how to handle rejection, and how to land a job. Does that require any critical thinking? Come on, people. Sisters, y'all got to get it together. We have to understand, too, that this life, this world today is filled with a lot of misinformation. <clears throat> Remember, we're living in the days in which Islam has become strange. We're living in the days in which Islam has become distorted. So a good teacher is going to train you to think critically. A good teacher is going to push you the way I try to push you guys to be able to express yourself clearly because Islam is so distorted. Because Islam is so misrepresented, you want to be able to describe and, and break down the religion so that a six-year-old can understand it. Okay? How many of these places y'all learn from do that? Remember, guys, Allah tells us in the Quran, in the interpretation of meaning, they do not reflect upon the Quran. I mean, do are, are they people who reflect on the Quran or are there locks upon their heart? So who are these teachers you have? Are they promoting critical thinking? Are they pushing you to learn the Hadith, understand their meaning, apply them, how to apply them in your life and all of that? Okay. And remember, guys, the prophet Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to encourage questioning and seeking knowledge of the religion. You know, one of the things I can't stand is to see a lot of these brothers come on YouTube, do a, a, a lecture, and then no questions. Then they just hang up and leave. Come on. That's because they can't answer the questions. Remember, guys, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the cure for ignorance is asking questions. So a lot of people might say, oh, Sister Layla, every time you do a class, you sit there and answer the same questions over and over again. That's my job as a daya. My job as a daya, I'm like a doctor. The doctor's job is to help find a way to address your physical sicknesses. It's my job as a dia to find a way to cure you of ignorance. Does a doctor stop practicing medicine because all his that he, because he has many many patients who have uh, the same sickness? Because I got three people coming to see me, and all three of them have the flu. The the flu. Does that mean that I stop? practicing medicine somebody calls sabrine so she just, she won't keep calling me okay uh, awa call her and ask tell her i'm teaching okay and also so i might have the same questions over and over and over and over again that's my job to answer it i don't care if it's a 50 million times OK, so again, guys, uh, does the person that you're seeking knowledge from, do they allow for questions and answers and do they answer your questions in detail? Do they answer your questions uh, 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 in detail with evidence? OK. And again. The focus should be on Islam. The focus should be Quran, Hadith, Aqidah, not how to do a hijab. I mean, if you want to add a, a, a class for new shahadas on how to fix a hijab, that's okay. But th that should not overshadow the purpose of the people coming to learn, which is Aqidah. Everybody understand that. 
Remember, guys, Allah says in the Quran, in the interpretation of the meaning, oh, Muhammad, what has been revealed to you of the book and the prayer, and, 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 and oh, Muhammad, recite what has been revealed to you of the book and perform the prayer because the prayer prevents sins and disbelief and remember your lord so again guys whatever classes you're taking that's supposed to be about islam they have to focus around akita akita your belief system the seerah the life of the prophet muhammad sallallahu wasallam, stories of the companions and things like that I find it so bad today that most Muslim children don't know anything about the companions. They don't know anything about the prophet's wives. All they can say is Khadija used to work. And no, she did not. She did not work in the sense that they think she did. I get tired of hearing about Khadija was a businesswoman. Do you know what that means? Do you think that Khadijah used to go out of town? That she would try that she traveled around the world selling stuff? That's a lie. That's not what she did. That's not what she was. Okay? So again, the focus should be around Akita. So thus, guys, um, uh, we're living in the digital age. We're living in the era of the internet and there are so many Muslim women and Muslim men claiming to be teaching you Islam, offering you to join their website and learn the religion. And like I said, most of them, most of them are charging money. Not that many of them are free. Most of them are charging you. And I ain't talking about cheap money, $200 every two weeks. That's a lot of money. That's $500 a month to teach you what? To teach you how to get closer to your Lord or to teach you how to live in this dunya? I don't get it. 